G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. Today, I wanna to talk about memory cards. Memory cards, wouldn't they be considered one of the most critical parts of our cameras? Because it doesn't matter what we do, how fast, how slow, how good, how amazing our camera is. If we can't be confident that our hard work is going to be captured and recorded and saved and not lost, well, it's pretty tough going out there and shooting in the first place. Now, of course, one way around this is to have two card slots. And indeed, that's true for some cameras and not all cameras. And even cameras that have two card slots, not all of them will put all of the content that they collect onto both cards. Once you're talking about video, that becomes a fairly specialized small group of cameras that do it to both. And yes, sure, there's lots out there, but there's way more that don't put video onto both cards. So what do we do to ensure that our hard efforts are recorded? Well, for me, who's gone through, I think, pretty much all of the different memory types since digital cameras started, and even before digital cameras, we had things like digital high eight and mini DV. That'll make some people a little bit bleary eyed, a little bit nostalgic. Those formats are, well, you know, almost something like 30 years old at this point in time. And all of them have their pros and cons. And look, I think the industry has done super well to continue to refine the media that we shoot on to a point where this media that we see here is very robust and very reliable and very fast. Now, what's interesting about these three cards here is they are exactly the same size, but they are a little bit different. The ones here are XQD. We've got one from Nikon, one from Sony. And then over here from SanDisk, we have CF Express Type B. They use the same physical format, but they do not use the same protocols. And CF Express Type B has been the iteration, the advancement of XQD. Now, it's an interesting thing to me. I'd love someone to let me know in the comments below, how did we kind of go from this format to this format, still using the same size card, but they're completely different. They have completely different names. It was Sony, I think, who championed XQD, and now CF Express Type B is an open industry format. And from my perspective, having used CF, SD, all the different types of SD, mini, micro, all of them. Magic Stick, I think, from Sony and so many others. There's been quite a few different types of memory over the years. One card type I've never used is CF Fast Cards, but I think that was a fast version of CF. Do let me know in the comments below. Sony camera out there that I think even used floppy disks, three and a half inch disks, whatever they were. I think there was even some cameras that recorded to optical CD discs as well. I mean, we've had crazy formats that verbose, absolutely over the top. And to me, we've now reached the pinnacle of all of that, which is a mixture, as I said, of speed, size, and robustness. And the robustness covers all sorts of things like how tough are they and can they handle X-rays? How much heat can they handle? Lots of different specifications along those lines. And CF Express Type B, without a shadow of a doubt, is that from my perspective. Now, there is CF Express Type A, which is what Sony is leaning into at the moment with all of their high-end cameras. We've just seen the Sony A7R5 also come out with this dual card system where you can put an SD card or a CF Express Type A card in the same slot. Not at the same time, but in the same slot. So you can kind of choose between SD and Type A. Now, on first glance, that's a great idea because you get the best of both worlds. You can still do SD, but you can do CF Express Type A. The problem is CF Express Type A, from a volumetric perspective, is considerably smaller than Type B. So it'll never be able to have the same capacities and heat dissipation attributes and so on. It's just never going to be the same as this card here. I can see why Sony does it because it allows you to have both cards, access to both types of cards. So that's kind of a pro. But the con is this format keeps getting bigger and faster. And this leads us to the latest and greatest from Pergia, this one terabyte card, which is running super fast. 
And as you can see here on the box, it has a 1600 megabyte per second read speed and a 1300 megabyte per second write speed. They are claiming that we can do what epic cameras like this need to be able to do, which is put 8.3K 60 frames per second raw video onto this card sustained until that one terabyte is full. Now, can anyone guess how much uh, 8.3K 60 frames per second raw you can get on one terabyte? I think I've done it once before and it was around 22 to 23 minutes. Isn't that epic? Unbelievably epic. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna test whether this card can actually do what it says on the box. And there it is, this is the card. And it's just like any other one terabyte card on the outside, but it's what's on the inside that matters. Alrighty, well, what we're gonna do here is we are going to format this card. Yes, we are. And we are now running firmware three. Um, let's do a full format, why not? Okay. Now, we're going to put this on to AK RAW. 12-bit Nikon RAW, fantastic. Now, whilst those two cameras are going through their paces, we've got the uh, Z9 here recording 8.3K 12-bit video RAW. Extremely intense thing for the camera and the card to do. Now, why Pergear? Firstly, we have to thank Pergear for allowing me to review this one terabyte card, which they are calling the Ultra. It's the CFE Type B, or should we shorten it to the CFE B Ultra? That's what it is. Now, why am I confident about Pergear at this point in time? Well, this is why. That's the reason there why I'm confident about Pergear. And it's because basically I've been using their cards for almost two years. And the first card they sent to me almost two years ago was the one terabyte card. And ever since then, they have allowed me to test each size iteration. We've got 64, 128, 256, 512, one terabyte and two terabyte cards. And I have continued to review all of these cards since they've sent them to me. And as I said, the oldest one being almost two years old. Now I have had zero problems with any of these cards, none whatsoever. And this segues me over to the original thing that I was talking about in this video is that I've never had a single problem with any of my XQD or CF Express Type B cards. Not one, not ever. The only problem I had, which was not a manufacturer's fault, is I stood on one of my cards it got dinted and obviously it got damaged on the interior. And you can see the dint on the outside. It was 100% my fault. Otherwise, every single card is continuing to function. And I have cards from the very first time I used XQD from back in 2012. So I've got XQD cards still working that are 10 years old and CF Express Type B, well, I think that format's only been out just over two years, and every single CF Express Type B card that I own still functions perfectly. So not only is CFEB a fantastic and robust format, it's absolutely my favorite. Every other format I've had, and it's mostly been SD and CF, and CF cards, compact flash cards, they have all failed at some point, whether it's just SD just seems to fail randomly, don't know why. And CF, it's always kind of about pin or pin misplacement. Anyway, they just tend to fail over time. CF Express XQD, do not. Great format. And per gear, for me, do not. All of these cards continue to function 100%. And look, that's all I can say. The reason I hold on to these is so I can continue to review them and I can let you know how long. Now, per gear, they give you a five year warranty and I would have thought all of us would be you know, pretty happy if we got five years out of our digital media. And in the case of the oldest one, which is right there in that camera, it's almost halfway to its five year mark. Anyway, let's have a look. How's this going here? 
So of the 23 minutes that we can fit on that one terabyte card, we've got 16 minutes to go. So we're about seven minutes in. This is an outstanding result. And it also goes across to stills. Now that we have high efficiency star, which is, I don't know, 99.9% .9 of the files that the lossless compressed are, from my perspective, if you are planning on shooting bursts, 20 frames per second raw bursts, then I would probably gently and warmly suggest just use high efficiency star. As we recently noted in this video here, major software vendors are now allowing us to use high efficiency star and edit with them in their full version of their software. Indeed, indeed, it is noted, truly and absolutely noted, that Adobe was allowing us to do that for perhaps the best part of most of this year, but it was actually in beta form. It wasn't their full and final release and nor was it on all platforms and all operating systems. Now, recently, both Capture One and Adobe across their camera raw, all of the software that works with that is now no longer in beta and it is supported in a full version across many different platforms, including running natively on Apple Silicon. So this is a big change for all of us. Obviously, some of us were enjoying it beforehand. Awesome, great work. So High Efficiency Star becomes a very useful format. And the reason I'm talking about it here is because it essentially almost halves the size of your files. At the end of this video, we'll do a High Efficiency Star burst and just see how far we get once, once this thing's finished recording. Alrighty, we're at the 16 and a half minute mark here, shooting 8.3 raw 12 bit video. What's super interesting to me about what's going on here with the Z9 is that just a few years ago, you wouldn't have thought that Nikon would essentially lead video in this flagship space. And let me say, I think this is driven a lot by the XP7 processor. I think we can all safely assume that the XP7 is coming to some new cameras. I suppose by the look of it, it's next year. Is it a Z8? Is it a Z63? Is it a Z73? I reckon those three cameras, if the three of them exist, I reckon they'll all have XP7s in them, variants of the XP7. And we're gonna see a lot of this technology trickle down into those cameras. That's what I think. That's what I think is going to happen. And what's amazing is this, and then those cameras will be some of the best video hybrid mirrorless cameras that you can buy. You've got raw internal, you've got ProRes internal, and you've got all these variants. And what Nikon's done with the Z9 is there's no asterisks or very few asterisks beside them. You can kind of do what you want. You can do it full frame. You can do it for hours. It's amazing. And it really, really shows to me that Nikon are super keen in this video space. And I've got something else to show you that just further concretes that for me. And that is this. This is Nikon getting a grip on video for video. How exciting is that? I mean, honestly, we've got this. So what this, what this essentially gives you is the right hand of a Z9. All of the buttons are there, the I button, the menu button, the play button, the zoom buttons. You've got your joystick, you've got your display button, your AF button, and you've got your usual dials here. But can I tell you, for the first time in my Nikon history, these are not clicky, they're smooth makes me think you could use them for zooming or pulling focus right here in your hand. If that's the case, no clicks and they're really firm. They're really nice. So you could vary your speed. You could do a creeping slow zoom, slow focus, or you can go fast, much faster. And I'm sure if they're planning on doing that, it will be customizable. So this to me is just another example of where Nikon are heading and video is very clearly in their crosshairs. Now, how are we going here? Are we up to the 20 minute mark? Now, an interesting side note when shooting RAW, the Nikon RAW, is they actually give you a low res MOV or MPEG file. This is our file here. So one terabyte, that is our RAW file. And then this is the 
file that they give you just so you can actually look at what you shot. It's pretty awesome that you get both files and it does those on the fly, makes you two versions. They give you that file and that's so you've got something to look at because you can't look if you don't have a raw processor. So it's kind of cute that you get both files. Now, I'm presuming they're creating both of those files on the fly because the files are suddenly there. I don't think it's going through and rendering that out after the fact. Whatever is in the Z9, it's one hell of a processor. That's all that I can say. It is, it is way more than anything Nikon has ever done in their camera space. And my guess is having a look at what Canon are up to and having a look at what Sony are up to at the moment right now, my guess is it's more powerful than all the ones they're using at the moment. I think it's more powerful than the Bions XR in the A1, because I think this goes just a bit further. And I think it's more powerful than what we're seeing in the R5, R6, or R3. All right, we've almost filled the card. We've almost filled one terabyte. Amazing. Probably the most important point about this test is it is a sustained write of a maximum of 1300 megabytes per second per gear states. And this is what allows you to do 8.3K 60fps raw. It's the sustained rate. We've got 20 seconds to go. The card is just about full. You've got almost 25 minutes of raw video. Card didn't have a problem with it. Amazing, 60 frames per second. So essentially at 60 frames per second, you've actually got almost an hour if you were to play that back at 24 frames per second. It's just a lot of content. It's a lot of frames. Per gear say this card can handle heat and the camera just, I mean, to the touch, the camera is slightly, slightly warmer than normal. Anyway, now what we're gonna do is format the card again and we're going to do some high efficiency star and just take a look at that. All right, format happening, yes. Again, we're doing a full format, why not? Let's do it because we can. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to high efficiency star. Now, whilst editing this video, I suddenly realized that my shutter speed was too slow when I was testing and thus the buffer was never filling up. I've gone back to the camera, I've run high efficiency star through it, and I'm getting six to seven seconds of bursting 20 frames per second high efficiency star raw. So we're talking about 120 to 140 images. I would have thought that would be enough for most people. The Pergear CFEB for Z9 or any other CF Express type B camera, their new fast cards. They're epic. And for 399 US dollars, I'm not sure you can go wrong. Please do let me know in the comments below what is your favorite CF Express Type B card? What do you use? And if you're a CF Express Type A user, what do you think about the smaller sizes and way more expensive cost of those cards? I'd love you to share all that and more in the comments below. I love hearing from you. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. And I'll see you soon. Firmware 3.0, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, bye for now.